In recent decades, it has been discovered that the brain is capable throughout life of changing its structure and configuration to the rhythm of its environment. In today's video, we'll talk about the evidences of the plasticity of the human brain and how it's never too late to exercise new areas of your brain. It was thought before genetics and education received during childhood was the way the brain developed, but now neurology and psychology have come together to tell us that it's not only about genetics, that there are also emotions, diet and many more things we can do about it. This is a new science that began just over a decade ago in which technology such as neuroimaging and brain magnetic resonance imaging is used to scan the brain of a living person to see how it develops over their lifetime. This research studies clearly show that the brain continues to develop for decades and a particularly crucial stage of development happens during adolescence. Before, people would have associated it only with hormonal changes, but now, neuroscience studies are showing that not only hormones change, but during this period there are also drastic changes in the brain, and there is an extraordinary series of changes in neurons during adolescence. About 15 years ago, the first study on brain development based on a magnetic resonance was published. It was the first proof that many things related to the brain occur during adolescence, and since then hundreds of articles with many samples have been published. Thousands of children who undergo brain resonance every few years and who reveal that there are many differences between the infant brain and an adult brain. The new concept is the plasticity of the brain. Unlike it was thought that with age the neurons stop growing, now it turns out that they don't, and that age is not an obstacle to keep learning and changing in different ways throughout our lives. We keep learning for our entire lives. The development, the changes in the number of cellular connections, and also the speed in which cells can communicate, seems to change naturally for decades. And there is also another type of plasticity that arises every time we learn something new, every time we learn a new word, a new phase, something changes in our brain and also in the strength of the connections between the cells changes, and we know that it could continue like this forever throughout life. Now it's known that in the adult brain new neurons are created, and that the synapses are more important than the number of neurons themselves. These connections keep being created, and with 70 or 80 years old, you can learn computer science, a new language, or any new skill. Of course the brain is less malleable, and learning new things requires more time, but it sure can be done. The studies also explain that babies up to 6 months of age can distinguish the face of a monkey from another monkey, and then they lose this ability. What happens is that when we are born we can perceive each sound and each face, but we lose the ability to distinguish between faces and sounds that are not too present in our environment. For example, a human baby will not have to see faces of monkeys, so it does not make sense that they invest a lot of brain energy in differentiating the different faces of monkeys. Then, they will probably miss the connections that allow you to process the differences between monkeys' faces, while the remaining connections that allow you to distinguish between human faces are reinforced. Another study on brain plasticity was a study done in London about taxi drivers. To drive a taxi there, you have to know about 25,000 routes. You have to learn all of them from memory, so it's about people with a prodigious spatial memory. They were studied to look at the structure and functions of their brains. And what was discovered was that comparing with other drivers, the hippocampus, which is a part of the brain that is responsible for memory and spatial learning, was bigger in taxi drivers compared to other drivers. And the size of that part of the hippocampus had to do with the time they had been driving a taxi, which suggested that size really had to do with the need to move around London. Another example on which there are studies are the experts' violins, whose brains in the right hemisphere are more developed, because it is a hemisphere that is in charge of the movement of the fingers in the left hand. There are also very interesting studies on people who learn to juggle. Learning to juggle balls, for example. If we compare people's brains before they learn how to juggle, and after three months of learning, 
the part of the brain involved in the processing of visual movements based on the fact of having to follow the path of the ball increases the size of the brain. And something interesting is that if they stop practicing for three months, the brain shrinks and returns to its original state. That has a lot to do with this concept of brain plasticity. In the same way that when we practice a sport, we develop more muscles. In the last decade, techniques such as magnetic resonance have allowed to see something similar happen with the brain. Now, the brain activity of a person can be measured while he develops a task and see how the nervous system adapts continuously to changes while learning a new language, a new skill, a different route home, or seeing a new face. The interesting thing about this is that now we know that we can all exercise our hippocampus to improve spatial memory and navigation. The part of the brain that processes the music is located on both sides of the head, very close to the ears. It is called auditory cortex, and in musicians it can be up to 25% larger than in people who have never played an instrument. And as it happens in taxi drivers, the size of the auditory cortex depends on the years that person has dedicated to music. But this is not the only change in your brain. Also, the regions that control movement and touch are transformed, as a result of the use when the finger touches a string. This sensory stimulus activates neurons in the cortex in its opposite motor. In addition, a high level of activity reinforces the connections between groups of excited neurons, and if an adult begins to play the violin, it also changes his sensory motor cortex. It has been shown that it just takes five days for the sensory motor areas to be modified and adapted to the new activity. Although, if we stop playing for a long time, we lose flexibility and synaptic connections. There are other examples that go in that same direction, as when you simply imagine yourself doing something that activates the same brain regions that when you really do what you had imagined, which means that mental practice can be effective, because if we imagine ourselves doing something, like running for example, it can influence our speed. It is a very subtle but significant influence. Our brain is moldable and has a great capacity to change and adapt depending on the environment and our experiences and can also reorganize functions. In deaf people, the auditory cortex, instead of processing the sound, activates to read the movements of the lips and adapts to circumstances to respond to other signals that the deaf person needs to process and understand. 